Hey everybody, welcome back to another video on the channel, Mist Football Balloons, and today I'm doing Game Week 33 predictions of the Premier League. And they're going to be starting off on the 13th of April, it's at St. James's Park, it's Newcastle United versus Tottenham Hotspur. Well, Newcastle United, that first half performance against Fulham was awful, honestly awful. I don't know how Fulham didn't get a goal in that, but then Bruno Guimaraes managed to get a late win at the 81st minute. Honestly, great performance by Bruno. But New Gash United missing 12 unavailable players is huge. Joe Willett going down with another injury. Not good for New Gash United. Although both teams are on reasonable good form in terms of results. 10 points in the last five games for both teams. I don't want to say Tottenham. I may be biased. I was tempted to go Tottenham. Maybe if Tottenham were at home, I would go Tottenham. Because New Gash United are home, because their home form's fantastic, I am going to say that Newcastle will not lose this game. Tottenham won't lose it either. Ange Postecoglou has got them playing some fantastic football. Honestly, some great attacking football. The fullbacks getting involved with the attacking football is fantastic to see. But against Newcastle, while Newcastle are at home, yeah, Newcastle are fighting for European football. Despite 12 unavailable players, I am going down the middle. It's always high scoring for Newcastle, other than last week, which is a one off, really. And I'm going to go 2 all come the final whistle. Moving on to next games at the G Tech Community Stadium. It's Brantford versus Sheffield United. And while well, coming into this game, this game kind of looks like a draw. You know what? Brentford and Sheffield United have both three points in the last five games. Both teams drawing three games in the last four. Obviously, Brentford, the last three games, they drew them all. Should have really got a win against Manchester United. I've said it the last couple of weeks. But Brentford, I think they're going to be fine, 100%. But Sheffield United, they looked better than Chelsea in that game, you know. The only stat that went Chelsea's way was, like, possession. But overall, Sheffield United looking pretty decent, trying to get the win. If it's any game to get a win, they need a win. If they want to have any chance of staying up, they have to win this. If they don't win this, they're 100% down. But they're starting to pick up points you know, quite late on when they should have really done that earlier on in the season. I had this prediction down as a 2-1 Brentford. Okay, I had it 2-1 Brentford because I thought they were at home, you know, that, that they're, in my opinion, better overall in terms of quality. Because Sheffield United have been picking up points, managed to get a draw against Chelsea, which are around ninth. I think they can definitely get a draw against Brentford. I feel like they're going to be desperate, Sheffield United. They're going to really push. It's going to be a really close game. And I'm going down the middle, 1-1. Come the final whistle. Moving on to the next game inside the Etihad Stadium. It's Manchester City versus Luton Town. What a great game that was. Six goal thriller in the Champions League. Two great goals for Manchester City. Phil Foden, fantastic. What a great goal. And what a great player. And Gavardio, we have to take credit. Another great goal as well. And then to seal it off, that game was fantastic. Valverde, what a volley as well. Three fantastic goals in that six goal thriller. A great game there. But back to the Premier League. Man City, nothing but a Man City win. I was thinking when Luton Town won against Bournemouth, I was thinking now they've won. Now, now they can try and get that momentum going. Now they've got one, they're going to be starting to click. But I didn't know what was around the corner and Man City was around the corner. So obviously I'm going to go Man City. Luton Town are always in the game though. So I'm not going to go for a thrashing. I'm going to give Luton Town two goals. But that, that's because Man City did look a bit, you know, leaky against Crystal Palace in terms of their defence. They made a few mistakes where they shouldn't have really made mistakes defensively. Defensively wasn't sound against Crystal Palace. It wasn't fantastic. Conceded two goals as well. So I will give Luton Town two and I will give Manchester City three, which means I'm going 3-2 to Manchester City come the final whistle. Moving on to the next games at the City ground. It is Nottingham Forest versus Wolverhampton Wanderers. And well, Wolves, was it like four points in the last five games? That's poor. In terms of their form, they're not doing particularly well. Although I would say in some of the games they could have got a draw, like the game against West Ham United. Yeah, th that decision was really tough. Gary O'Neill was definite. That was the worst decision ever. I was kind of with him, not the worst decision ever, but I was kind of with him that it wasn't amazing. But then the more I looked at it, the more I was like, maybe considering what the Lord does state, he was in an offside position and he was quite close to the goalkeeper. Maybe I'm kind of torn between the two, but it is what it is at the end of the day. Wolves, yeah, they haven't been on the amazing form. They were unlucky against West Ham, but they're facing Nottingham Forest where Chris Wood is banging on goals galore. Goals galore. You know, another goal. Another goal. Yes, they did lose 3-1 against Spuds, but they were in that game. 
and they're desperate. So I'm not going to go for all Nottingham Forest window because I feel like Wolves still have a lot of quality. So I'm going to go down the middle for a 1 1 draw come the final whistle. Moving on to the next game is at Turf Moor. It's Burnley versus Brighton and Joe Balbian. And well, Burnley, they lost at 1 0 against Everton. They lost it against Everton 1 0. They had all the possession, but they didn't have the goal. Zero goals scored in that one. You know what? They did kind of gift Everton the goal. They gifted Everton the win. Murek, what is he? What is he? He needs to go to spec savers because how could he not see Calvert Lewin in front of him, you know? But overall, Murek's still a fantastic goalkeeper, but that was a silly mistake that happens, doesn't it, really? Burnley. I feel like that one should have really been a draw against Everton. They could have easily got on a point. That does end their little streak of four games unbeaten. They're back to square one. But they're facing Brighton, which have not been well. They've been moving down the table slowly but surely, moving into 10th position. What is it, like four or five points in the last five games? It's, it's not fantastic for Brighton. Although I would say they probably should have got three points against Brentford when they drew it 0-0. It's hard to predict this one. I would say Brighton are the better side, but Burnley are desperate. They're at home. You know, they're going to get at least something in this game. I'm not going to say three points. And I, I, I'm, I'm trying to avoid what happened last week. Did I actually say this? I feel like Brighton looked really good against Brentford. I'm going for it. I'm going for a shock. I'm going to stop waffling. Sorry, Arsenal fans, but I'm going Brighton three. Arsenal won, come on, final whistle. Yeah, they, let's never mention that again, okay? I, I, I don't know what I was thinking, but oh well, let, let's carry on with this prediction. In this game, I'm going to have to go down the middle. I, I don't want to go for a Burnley win, because I feel like Brighton can easily bounce back from a huge loss, but I'm going to have to go down the middle. I feel like Burnley will definitely get something from this game. I'm going 1-1, come the final whistle. Moving on to the next game, is at the Vitality Stadium. It's AFC Bournemouth versus Manchester United. And well, Manchester United got two or draw against Liverpool. I don't know how because for the first, like, what, 50, 55 minutes? I can't remember exactly when they got the goal. They had zero shots. Their first goal was their first shot. I mean, it was an ugly draw in that game. In terms of how Manchester United played, it was an ugly draw. Somehow, if they play terrible, if they're not performing in a game, it's happened throughout the entire season this season and a bit last season. They somehow get away with a result. In this game, the favourites, I believe, in terms of probability from Google, from what I've seen from the, the, the Google where you see all the games, it does say Bournemouth have more of a probability chance to win this. But I'm going to go against that because I know what will happen. Bournemouth, they'll play better. Manchester United, they won't play as well. They always find a way. They always have that one really good pass from Bruno Fernandes or someone to get a goal. It just always happens that they always Manchester United manage to scrape a result, even if they don't play well. So I'm going to go Manchester United. I wouldn't be surprised for a Bournemouth win, but I know what Manchester United are like. And I'm going to go 2-1 to Manchester United come the final whistle. Moving on to the next game is a whole new day. It's the 14th of April. It is at Anfield. It's Liverpool versus Crystal Palace. And well, Crystal Palace versus Manchester City. You know what? They did pretty well, Crystal Palace. They did decently well. They created a few chances here and there. Got two goals, which is fantastic. Elise did come off the bench. And I believe that probably means Elise and Eze are fit coming into this game. But despite those two, the master duo of Crystal Palace, I still feel like Liverpool are going to win. I mean, that's as many points as they can drop. They can't drop any more points in the tour draw against Manchester United. Yeah, I feel like Liverpool... There's nothing but a Liverpool win here. There's no way Crystal Palace can get something with the form. Two points in the last five games is not good. Although they have performed well here and there, but they're not getting the victories. Obviously, I'm going to go Liverpool. I'm going to stop waffling, get this over and done with, and I'm going to go 3-1 to Liverpool come the final whistle. Moving on to the next game. It's at the London Stadium. It is West Ham United versus Fulham. Bit of a London derby here. Fulham, they lost one though against Newcastle United. You know what? They were a bit unlucky not to get a goal but if you don't finish your beans you're going to be punished like that but overall Fulham I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy you know for in terms of how they play and how well they are currently performing yes they haven't been amazing in the last three games I don't think they've got a win in the last three games a loss against New Gash United draw against Sheffield United a loss against Nottingham Forest although they always created a substantial amount of opportunities and they did win 3-0 against Spuds a few games ago so, Fulham, they're a quality side. 
Jared Bowen's injured for, for West Ham. Could this mean that Fulham are going to win? No, because George James Ward-Prowse can score corners now, apparently. Was assisted by the wind, by Storm Clathine or whatever she's called. James Ward-Prowse, a set-piece king, continues. If West Ham were away, I would say probably a draw. But I'm going to go high-scoring. West Ham have been involved in a lot of high-scoring games. So I'm going to go for very high-scoring. Both teams, probably in terms of quality, are very similar. I like the way Fulham are playing, but they're just not getting the points. But I'll stop waffling. I'm going for a very high-scoring seven-goal thriller. 4-3 win to West Ham United. Moving on to the next game is at the Emirates Stadium. It is Arsenal against Aston Villa. And, well, this one's going to be an interesting game, or is it? Because I'm not going to do what I, what I did last video, like saying it's going to be 3-1 to the opposing team's Arsenal, because Arsenal... Thresh Brighton. Well, it wasn't just a threshing. They really did dominate that game. Completely deserved. Arsenal all over Brighton. And they also did manage to get a two draw against Bayern Munich. And that's a very good draw in the Champions League. Arsenal are a quality side. They're first place. And if you look at it, Arsenal are probably favourites to win. Number one, they're currently first. Number two, they've got the best defensive record. Number three, they've got the best attacking record. Number four, they've got the most goal difference. I mean, it's in their hands, but Arsenal, we know how they like to bottle things. And Man City Liverpool are only just under them. And Liverpool had it in their hands, but then they drew to Manchester United. So anything can happen. If Arsenal would drop some points, Aston Villa is probably one of the teams currently that they've got to play that could possibly do some damage to Arsenal. Ollie Watkins scoring, scoring, scoring. But I'm going to have to give it to Arsenal. They thrash Brighton. They've also beat Liverpool 3-1. I'm going to have to go Arsenal at home as well. I don't think this is going to be the game that, that they're going to drop points. But I am going to go 3-1 to Arsenal come the final whistle. Moving on to the next game. It's a whole new day. It's the 15th of April. So that's Stamford Bridge. It's Chelsea versus Everton. This one's a very, very, very close game, I feel like. Coming to this game, a draw could definitely happen. But Chelsea, last seven games, undefeated. They've gotten to a final of the Carabao Cup. They're still in the FA Cup. You know what, Chelsea? Yes, you could say they, they were probably the worst team against Sheffield United. In my opinion, Sheffield United probably maybe deserved the win in that game. But Chelsea seem to be always not losing. And against Everton, it's going to be low scoring. I mean, it always is for Everton. It is quite low scoring because they cannot score much, Everton. I think that's why... Everton are not going to get any points in this game. They slap, you know, they cannot score. The only reason they scored in the last game was because Burnley gifted it to them. That's why. Although Cam Loon didn't just get a gifted goal, he did well to pounce on it. He's also all, all over the attacking area, constantly making dribbles inside the box, getting shots off, you know, but he's not clinical enough. Although Cam Loon does look oh, it, it, quite decent in terms of that, he never has that end product. And again, like I say, they need a proper established number nine. Calvin Lewin used to be that established number nine, but then he had injuries. He hadn't really returned with a lot of goals. I wouldn't be surprised for maybe a nil-nil. I was tempted to go like that, but I am going to go Chelsea. Only just about one nil come the final whistle. Well, who's my goal of game week 31 first? Has to be McAllister's goal against Sheffield United. This is of game week 31, so not this week, the week before. Absolute rocket of the goal. Fantastic goal. And moving on to goal of last week, game week 32. That was a huge selection. You could, could have went with Maynou's goal, which was a fantastic goal. Hadn't scored many for Manchester United. And he scores that absolute banger of a goal against Liverpool. Fantastic by Maynou. You could also go with Bruno Fernandes' goal. But in my opinion, yes, that was from very far out. And that was some great accuracy to do that. But I feel like Kevin De Bruyne's goal was the best. His first goal for Manchester City against Crystal Palace was the best one, in my opinion. Because it, it was at an angle, and it was whipped in top, top right. And that looks the best, in my opinion. Bruno Fernandes' goal was good, but the goalkeeper was way off his line. So I wouldn't count it as good as De Bruyne's goal. But how did I do in game week 31 and game week 32? Well, game week 31, I managed to pick myself six points in total. And game week 32 was a slight decrease. I only got four points in that game. So overall, that puts me on 187 points out of 626 points. Hopefully you did enjoy the video. And if you did, 
why not drop a like and subscribe? Again, you don't have to if you don't want to. It's all up to you. But if you enjoyed this, then why not? It helps out the channel massively. And if you also did enjoy the video, check out this banger of a video. Toodle pit!